in the fifth tutorial, uh, we say hello to new data sets. Let's take a break from Titanic and learn about some other frequently used tasks in data preparation, specifically merging and grouping data together. We will deal with two data sets, one containing the products sold by an organization and one with the transactions, information about which customers purchased which product. After combining these sets, we can answer questions about the most frequently purchased products or who is your most loyal customer. Let's get started. In the next step of our tutorial, we are asked to expand the samples tutorial, expand the samples repository, and then the data panel to retrieve products and transactions data. Products are right here. Transactions are, we have transactions here. We retrieved both of the data sets. We're gonna search for the join operator. I'm gonna drag it in, connect the left and the right side. And I'm just gonna mention that this might be similar to the things you learned in databases and the database process of joining the left and the right side. Once we have this all connected, we're gonna click on join to select it and then go to the parameters panel to find the key attribute. We edit the list. We are gonna select the product ID for the left key and also for the right. And we're gonna click apply. We're gonna now drag the aggregate operator and as you can see, it is found in grouping. We're going to connect the join and aggregate. We're going to click on aggregate, then find aggregate attributes and edit the list. We're going to select the customer ID, and then we're going to select count. But we're not done yet. We're going to add another entry. Then we're going to select the product name and select this function called mode. Now we're going to click apply and the last step is to select the group by attribute which is going to be the product id click apply and we're done the next step connects the aggregate to the result and run the program we're going to drag these so that we can see the names of our attributes the next step of the tutorial asks us a few questions but before we get into that i just want us to understand what we have here so here we have the row number, which tells us which row we're looking at, the product ID, which is the ID of our product right here. So product ID number one is this, the next one, two is Rita Laut. For example, Azot is, re is fairly easy to read, so it's product ID eight. We can also sort by the product name itself, and we can see how many customers bought this product. Now, which product has been most often sold and which product was sold only five times? So if we go ahead and sort the numbers, sort the count of customers, that is how many uh, different customers bought it, we have that AthSat, AthSat is uh, the most popular. And if we scroll down and see which one has five purchases, it's Bakta. Can you find out in the statistics tab what the average number of transactions was? Can you also see the visual distributions of values in this tab? If we go to the statistic and then see the count, we can see the distribution minimum is 4, maximum is 22, while the average is 13. So on average, 13 people buy our product. The count function counts the number of transactions for each product. But each product can also be purchased multiple times in each transaction. Can you change the parameter of aggregate so that the total sum for each product is calculated? Which products have been sold more than 65 times? That's a good question. Let's answer it. If we go ahead and go back to the design tab, click on aggregate, double click it, we're going to see that we're counting customer ID. So let's see what we need to be counting. Uh, let's make a copy of transactions just to understand transactions a bit better. We're going to name them transactions table and then click on run. Now we see the transactions table data set. Let's see if we sort by customers. We see that one customer can buy uh, many products. So what should we be counting? 
Row number seems to be unique. Customer ID can repeat. Product ID can also repeat. And as we can see by the data in our rows, it can either um, we can have a case where the customer buys just one product, five of them, two of them, maybe five again, or any number. So let's see what's the biggest amount that somebody has bought. It's five. Now we counted this row as just one purchase of our product. So we need to account the amount. If we go back to the design view, we now know that our aggregate function shouldn't be counting customer IDs. It should be counting the amounts and summing them up. Let's see if this change gives us the result we wanted. I'm going to delete the transaction table and run the process. As we can see, now we have the sum of all the amounts for our products. And we are asked which product has sold more than 65 times. Well, we have two. Uh, they're called Quarlex and Turbolax. Now, if we go to the statistics tab, our distribution of sales has also changed. And we can see that we that our minimum uh, sales contained 11 sales of a product. Maximum contained 69 sales of the product. And on average, we sell 40 of each product. If we want a better visualization, we can click the link here and it will take us to the visualization tab. Visualization, sorry. <laughs> That's been it for this tutorial. Let's go ahead and save it. And I'll see you in the next one.